afternoon. Thank you for being here. Um, and for this press conference, we will begin with opening statements from our mayor, Mayor Aftab Pierball. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Yesterday, a Cincinnati Police Department officer in the death of one man. Tragic loss of life. And today I'm joined by Interim Police Chief Teresa Thiege, Vice Mayor Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney, When Interim Chief uh, Fiji will go through um, uh, frame by frame with the body cam footage to describe the incident. Thank you, and I will now invite Interim Police Chief Teresa Fiji to provide updates on the incident. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Thank you for being here with us this evening. Um, as you know, we're here to talk about the officer involved shooting that occurred yesterday in the Madisonville neighborhood. So on July 24th, 2022, at approximately 1649 hours, a 911 caller reported a silver Toyota Avalon license plate, James Charles Edward 1232, driving erratically and the operator nodding off at the wheel, possibly an operating vehicle while intoxicated situation. The caller advised he was on Red Bank Road near Madison Road, as I said, in the Madisonville neighborhood. Police officer Genesis Steele was on duty in uniform and operating a marked police vehicle. At approximately 1653 hours, so just four minutes after the call came in, Officer Steele advised she was in the area. We're gonna, there's an aerial shot here and we're gonna uh, play some of the 911 transmission for you. I want to set it up for you a little bit. <clears throat> the first conversation that you're going to hear, the 911 call originally went to the Hamilton County Communications Center. That communication center called our communication center to transfer the call. So that's the first voices you're going to hear before the 911 caller. Alrighty, what's that license plate? It's going to be John Charles Edward 1232. Alright, call are you there? Yep. Alright, tell me exactly what's happening at the intersection of Madison and Red Bank. So it's actually the one north of Red, uh, Madison off of Red Bank. It was a, it was a, we're in the Avalon, and then like a beige, silver, the champagne color, the license plate is in the back rear right window, the driver was scared. It's swerving very erratically, and then when you stopped at the light, um, like, it looked like you're basically losing conscious. And which way are they headed? Uh, they're headed to the south, towards, towards Madison from, which way? Like, I took the red bank exit, I got stopped at the first light, and then when I called, I was asked to Madison Red Bank. So did he con so he continued on Madison or he continued on Red Bank? He continued he was on Madison continued I'm sorry, he was on Red Bank continued on Red Bank, but like when the light changed, he didn't go. Like he was just stopped. Okay. Um, as we proceed, I'm not sure if any of you are covering this live, um, but I do want to give you a forewarning. In the body cam footage, there is some graphic scenes towards the uh, end of what we're going to show you here today. So just FYI on that. <clears throat> 
At approximately 1657 hours, Officer Steele advised she located the vehicle in the UDF parking lot. Officer Steele parked her patrol vehicle near the suspect's vehicle, exited her car, and walked behind her car and behind the suspect's car. Officer Steele was at the passenger side rear of the suspect's vehicle when she observed a subject now known as Leonard Brewington, a white male, 34 years old, standing beside the open front passenger side door. Mr. Brewington reached into the vehicle, retrieved a handgun, and immediately pointed it at Officer Steele. Officer Steele gave several verbal commands for Mr. Brewington to get on the ground. At approximately 1657 hours, Officer Steele fired five shots from her duty weapon, striking Mr. Brewington in the torso and the groin area. Officer Steele called for Cincinnati Fire Department to respond. Just as Officer Steele was advising over the radio, shots were fired, the dispatcher was initiating a broadcast advising the vehicle was entered as a stolen vehicle. Now, just so you know, you guys have seen many of our body cam videos. The first 30 seconds is video only, no audio. Then the audio will kick in. This is a still photo from the body cam footage. You can see Mr. Brewington. Not only is he armed, but he is bringing his firearm up to his eye level with Officer Steele as his intended target. This is after Mr. Brewington had been shot, shows the firearm still in close proximity to him. This is just prior to Officer Steele kicking it away. What Mr. Brewington had was a high point nine millimeter handgun. He did have one in the chamber and two in the magazine. Mr. Leonard Brewington, this is his uh, basic information. Uh, Mr. Brewington was transported to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center immediately after the incident where he succumbed to his injuries. As I said, Mr. Brewington's weapon was a high point nine millimeter, one in the chamber, two in the magazine. Officer Genesis Steele has been with us since November of 2017. She is currently assigned to District 2, works the late power shift. A couple of other tidbits of information for you. Uh, earlier today, um, myself and a few others met with Mr. Brewington's family, uh, let them watch the video, and had some conversations with them. 
this was a tragic event for everybody involved. Uh, Mr. Brewington's mother and a couple of siblings came to visit with us. So obviously they have lost a son and a brother. Um, we now have an officer who's been through a traumatic incident. And as part of a normal protocol, she will be given five days administrative leave, um, a visit with a police psychologist, and also a visit out to the target range to practice some shooting with a temporary weapon. Uh, one of the things I do want to note, you saw the picture, the still photo with Mr. Brewington having a weapon pointed at the officer. I would like to say that obviously the investigation will run its course. We are here to be in full transparency. Um, but her reaction, Officer Steele's reaction, is in alignment with our training. She did exactly what she was trained to do. Okay. Uh, thank you all for attending this briefing today. And I want to thank the police department for promptly processing this information. Um, again, this briefing is held in the, in the spirit of the collaborative agreement to be um, open and transparent when these types of events happen so that the community uh, can be assured that uh, we are thoroughly looking and investigating these actions. And again, I'm grateful for all the hard work of the police department in preparing this material for today. Good evening. Um, once again, I think you see uh, right before your eyes what police officers across, across the country and here in the city of Cincinnati, unfortunately, have to face uh, on a daily basis. This is a uh, tragic incident. Loss of life this way is tragic. Uh, but as the chief said, um, it appears Officer Steele did everything she was trained to do. Um, staying alive as a Cincinnati police officer is paramount to the family and the community. Um, the training that the Cincinnati police go through daily is training that saves lives, citizens' lives, and it saves police officers' lives. So any loss of life of this magnitude is tragic, but I think the public needs to continually understand what men and women of the Cincinnati Police Department face on a daily basis. It's not easy. It's not easy, but we have the best trained, the best police department that is aware of what is necessary during difficult times. So we'll continue to pray for Officer Steele. We will continue to pray for the family that lost a son, lost a brother, lost a cousin uh, yesterday. Thank you. OK, um, we'll take any questions at this time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, she was a single officer unit yesterday. Oh, yes, absolutely. We, we sometimes have single units out, sometimes double units out. Yes. We do not know yet. The investigation is still ongoing into the ownership of, of the handgun. Well, we must have covered it all very thoroughly. If there's no more questions, I just wanted to close by saying we had an extraordinarily busy weekend this past weekend, and um, our Cincinnati Police Department, our Fire Department, our public service servants across the city worked tirelessly um, straight through the weekend, um, and uh, we in city leadership are incredibly grateful for that. Um, as it relates to this incident, as has been discussed, a full investigation will happen, um, but it's very clear from the body cam footage that the officer acted uh, exactly how she was trained to act, and had she not acted that way, she likely would have lost her life. Thank you very much. I do want to just add real quick, um, as, as the mayor noted, we also have CCA, the Citizen Complaint Authority, will be doing a parallel investigation. And Mr. Gabe Davis was at the scene yesterday with us, and he is here today. So we will have a cooperative investigation with them. I do know that he had a lengthy driving um, history, um, a few misdemeanors. I do not believe he had any felony arrest. Okay. 
It was stolen out of Springfield Township. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Alton.